G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm going to be covering how to create a flip panel facade uh, using images in Grasshopper. So this is sort of like a follow-on tutorial from my image sampling tutorial. It's a similar technique, um, just a different way of applying it. So essentially we're going to be sampling an image or a photo um, in this case, and we're going to be looking at the brightness and also the color in order to uh, affect our facade, so to twist our panel. So there's a lot of ways to use these sort of techniques. Um, these are just some examples of ways people in the real world have actually done uh, facade optimization or facade modification uh, using a, a sampling technique most likely, especially in this case. So I'll be using Rhino 6 today. Um, so if you're following along at home, um, I recommend you use this version and Grasshopper. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's a bit sore today. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're just going to start off in a Grasshopper. And what we'll do first, I'm just going to chuck down a bifocals so that you can see the name of the nodes as I use them. Because um, that's quite helpful for teaching people. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle. <clears throat> so I'll just make a rectangle. And for the plane, we'll just let it be the XY plane, which is the, the number by default. I'm just going to create a slider in this case. We'll just do from 1000 up to up to 5,000 and we'll just set it to 1,000 by default just for the size of our rectangle itself in the X and the Y direction. So that should give us our plane that we can put an image on. What I want to do is I want to crank that up so it's facing in the Z direction. Um, so facing directly up or horizontally outwards towards us. So I'm going to add a rotate geometry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my rectangle and I'm going to rotate it on the, the Y, Z plane and I want to rotate it by 90. So in this case, it already knows what we're doing essentially. At the moment, it's doing 0.5 by pi. Um, if you wanted to set up an actual angle, you'll note by default that it won't necessarily work. And that's because it's working in radians. All you have to do is right click and go degrees for it to work in degrees. And obviously you can crank this at any particular angle that you want. In this case, I'm just going to do 90. Okay, so what we're going to do now is create what's called a rectangular array using this uh, cell that we've made. So we're going to make an array and we're going to get a rectangular array. There's a lot of different types of array. There's a linear for one direction, rectangular for two direction, box for three, and also polar arrays as well. So there's a lot of great techniques you can use with arrays. Um, we're just going to use quite a basic one here. So we're going to do geometry and cell. And what it gives us is essentially a grid um, of cells that we can interact with. So we're just going to create a number slider here between uh, 1 to 100, and I'll just start at 30 in this case. And this will be our X count and our Y count. And there we go. Now we have a grid of 30 by 30 cells. And obviously if I increase or decrease that, my, my polar array, or my, sorry, my rectangular array uh, decreases in size. So that's quite straightforward. Um, what we're going to do now is get the centroid of each of those panels. So we're going to use actually the area node in this case. So for each of those geometries, we want to get their centroid or their center point. Um, what we're also going to do is get their bounding box. So this is a similar technique to what I did in my Im image sampling tutorial. Um, so sorry if you've already seen it. A bit of repetition, reinforcement learning. <laughs> we're going to do what's called a union box. So if you don't do a union box, I think you end up with a bounding box for every single cell. If you do a union box, it just does the whole geometry. And this essentially gives us a plane um, that we can get a, a surface from. So we can just feed through the surface node. And in this case, we should just get one untrimmed surface. So I'll just turn off a few of these previews while I'm at it too. I'll just turn it on. I'll keep that on for now. And I'll keep our centroid on for now. What we want to do with uh, our surfaces now is we want to get a closest point to surface. So surface closest point. And of all our centroids, we're just going to find the point as it occurs on the surface. And what we're going to do then is also we're going to reparameterize our surface. Um, I'll show you why. So at the moment, we'll get some U and V coordinates for where on the surface those points occur. The problem is that we're going to be working in a domain of 0 to 1. So we want to remap this to a domain of 0 to 1. If you reparameterize your surface, You'll note that now it remaps the whole range of domains between 0 and 1. So much more of a workable domain for working on other aspects, or such as image sampling. What I'll do, I'll just turn off the preview for these. I might just turn off the centroids as well, and also my surface. But essentially now we have a set of UVs that we can feed into an image sampler. So I'm just going to get an image sampler. 
take my UV points. I'm just going to double click to load my image and I'm going to just path in a picture of me. So what I'll do is just analyze this on a black and white aspect for now. So all we're looking at at the moment is just uh, how dark the image is essentially. So what I should get now is a range of values between zero and one representing the how white or how black that cell is. So pretty cool. Um, what I'm going to do now is remap this domain because what I want to do with this value is I want to use it to twist these panels so that essentially the darker or the lighter it is, uh, it will rotate the panels differently. So we're going to remap this domain to between negative 45 to 45 degrees. So we're going to take these values and our source domain is already zero to one. And our domain that we'll construct is going to be negative 45 to 45. So we'll, we'll just right click on this, set domain. Oh, it's being a bit tricky. There we go. Negative 45 to 45. And what this should do is remap our values between these two values. There we go. And now you can see these will be the rotation angle angles of each respective panel. That's our domain. What we need to do now is set up the ability to be able to twist our domain as well. So I'm actually going to add an addition. So to these values, I'm going to add a optional number. So I'm just going to make a number slider and I'll just make it from zero to 360 and I'll start off at zero. Okay. And now we should be able to modify these values um, as we turn them through. So you can see now, as I move this, my values will increase or decrease. So we'll twist our panels further. So that gives us the ability to pick the, the, the point of the facade we want the panels to be rotated to. Um, what we're going to do with this is actually use a rotation node again. And we're just going to rotate our cells about the, the center axis in this case, which is the default. So we're going to take our angle. We're going to go back and get our geometry, which in this case is each of our rectangular cells. So I'll connect that in here. Um, at the moment, it's pretty, pretty hectic. Um, the plane that we want in this case is actually going to be their centroid. So if you wanted to rotate these in a different orientation, uh, you could you could manipulate the centroid's uh, plane. But there we go. And you can see at the moment it doesn't quite work, and that's because we're working in uh, radians. So again, we go to degrees, and there we go. Um, so essentially what we can do now is just turn these into surfaces. So I'll just go and get a surface node. So that's our panels. At the moment, we can't really see the impact that the image is having on the facade. Um, so we'll probably need to make our facade a little bit bigger. But you can see that they're all, they're all rotating at different, different aspects. What I'll do is just make my array a lot bigger. And we should start to notice this image coming through. Um, what you can do as well is you can also map a color um, based on something as well. So let's just say we want to map the domain of our color to a gradient. So we can see here that we've got our range of values uh, that are mapped in this case. I'm going to take, a, sorry, I'm going to take a gradient in this case, which is a standard gradient. What we can do here is take our parameters in this case. So what we'll do is just take the values directly out of how black or how white they are. And then we can do a custom preview and we'll just apply a custom preview to our surfaces. So I'll just turn off the preview for my actual surfaces and also for my geometry. And then depending on the how black or how white it is, um, we can map different gradients as well. So we can do different presets. So there's a lot of different options we can do. We can even remap a black to a white gradient <clears throat> on there. And as these turn, um, you'll see that you'll get different sorts of effects. Um, so you can mix and match by playing with the domain of these elements. Um, but there you go. So quite a, quite a simple technique, but I think there's a lot of um, a lot of power for what you could do with it. And it teaches a lot about domains as well. That's really what we're doing here. We're working with um, numerical domains from an image. Um, but yeah, quite an effective little little tutorial. So I've just made that a bit smaller there so you can see the panels actually rotating. Um, so that, that's what this, this slide is really good for, just to change the, the phase of the rotation. So there you go, uh, quite straightforward. Um, so hopefully you found that useful and it gives you some other ideas of how you can work with image sampling and also with facades. 
Um, if you've got any uh, feedback or queries, feel free to leave it down below. I try to make videos about two times a week and I continue, will continue to, do, uh, continue to do so for a long time. So thanks for watching today. And um, again, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.